I think it's important that we not shame ourselves for sharing spaces with others where we'd have hopes, desires, and expectations later to find out that they aren't able to be met. It's a possibility that one may project their truest desires onto someone, desires that can reflect how it is that you want to relate and connect with people, how it is you want to connect with yourself and relate with the world around you. However, a lot of the times, this projection isn't so much for them to make the change to align with your hopes, desires, and expectations, but it's merely to reflect back to you what it is you truly want and to give you the idea of the changes you can make to serve yourself. And it's not that there isn't anyone that immediately aligns with your needs and wants or are willing to meet them. However, it's important to bring awareness to the moments where you're trying to pull a person or people into a space where they are telling you and showing you they don't have the capacity for it, nor do they value what you value in the same way. And that's okay. Now... Experiment on something by beginning to feed yourself and nourish yourself through showing up fully in your own values and the expectations and desires that you wanted from that other individual or those people. And then pay attention. See if that attraction if just is just as strong. See if those desires are there nine times out of ten. The attraction is not the same. You don't want those things from those individuals, although you will appreciate when it is given to you. Will it be from that same individual? Possibly not. They may not have grown to that capacity that you are wanting. That's okay. Because now that you are emitting a certain frequency by showing up for yourself, you'd attract those people. And... Be patient in that. And then ask yourself, why is it that I'm wanting to linger on the potentiality of someone rather than coming into the belief that I will attract those people? And there are others who are able to show up in the ways that aligns with your values. Because... There may not be anything wrong with what it is you desire and hope for and see. However, you're more likely to feel like that when you continuously pour into a space that doesn't even carry that same volume of the amount that you are willing to give or working to give or wishing to give. So, of course, it would feel like a season of famine If you're hunting for berries in a garden full of weeds, you understand? But why are you in that garden full of weeds while your vision is in a garden full of fruits and vegetables that you are ready to harvest? So it must be still this energy that is compatible with, let's say, an emotionally unavailable person. Where are you emotionally unavailable with yourself? It can be a lesson of that. It can be a lesson of acceptance. It can be a lesson of self-esteem and self-worth and redirecting your energy into spaces that are in alignment with how it is you affirm and care for you. Yes, you may feel so strongly about them and see the potential and glorify the potentiality. But now... Even just creating the image of you coming into your full potential. Hold on to that, right? Give space for the reality where you are meeting yourself fully. Hold on to that. And allow yourself to feel all the emotions that comes up when someone doesn't meet your expectations, hopes, or desires. A lot of the times, it would be emotions that we felt before. A lot of the times it's from childhood. A lot of the times because when we attract someone, it feels so strongly. First of all, attraction does not immediately equate to compatibility. 
But attraction is just indicating what aspects are energetically magnetic and in alignment with the other person. All the time that is in sun, sunshines and rainbows, there are many times where an aspect in that, that attraction is sharing the compatibility because it's rooted within the same similar womb. So, of course, there's a lesson in that. But you have to allow yourself to feel what comes up. Again, childhood can be the beginning of that, right? And we're looking for connections that matches where we first learned how to relate with another individual. Even if it isn't serving us fully to our highest good, it's like an aspect of ourself is still looking for that familiarity, Right? And that familiarity would show up in a certain dynamic. For example, those with a anxious attachment style more, is more likely to attract someone with an avoidance attachment style. So the friction in the, in the shadow part of the connection would root from there. And if you are not aware of it, and let's say you're still trying to pull someone into the capacity that you want them to hold space for you, it can have that connection feel heavy. You have to accept the fact that they aren't there, but you have the power, the resources, and are fully capable to cultivate that space for yourself. And yes, I get it. Trust me, I get it. You may feel so, it feels like, you know, this has to work with this person. Like, I just feel it. I see it. Like, I see them. I, they, they're giving signs of the, the way, right? But you don't know what that way is going. You only see so much, but you know what you want. So why are you trying to get it from someone who's not serving that same plate? And then you wonder why you're starving. You wonder why you're hurting. You wonder why you're malnourished. Of course, you'll be disappointed. But feel all of that. Feel all of those emotions that would surface. And validate yourself for feeling those emotions. Because again, a lot of the times this is rooted from early on. We may have experienced some type of emotional neglect and Felt like we couldn't feel the things that we felt. So, no, see this as an opportunity to cultivate that space for yourself where it's just like, you know what? I do feel like this. I am disappointed. I needed this and it wasn't met. And that makes me sad. That makes me disappointed and that hurts. You know, feel it. Right? Don't feel embarrassed by it or shamed by it. Feel it. And then when you begin to grieve, because grieve the potentiality, right? So when you begin to grieve it, you realize what you're actually grieving is the death of your own ego. You are actually grieving the aspect of yourself that is shedding from that reality that was rooted in a wound, that was rooted in pain, that was rooted in an illusion, that was rooted in delusional optimism. In hopes that someone showed up for you and they didn't. Maybe it was a parent, a guardian, a friend, a previous lover, whoever. Maybe it was you, right? And as you let go from a place of love, right? And not letting go from bitterness or resentment or fear. Because you can miss the message that way. But when you release in love, when you're choosing to bring awareness to the truth of the matter, to the reality, to the truth of how it is you're actually feeling, you are more likely to receive the lesson. And I like to say how lessons don't lessen, they make you greater, but now the lesson may feel like you're lessening what it is that is available to you, the loss, the mourning, the shedding, the releasing, the releasing of expectations and even just the thought of releasing that individual.
can feel scary. It can, you know, raise questions as to, well, what's going to happen? You know, so that's why we hold on to things that may not serve us to our highest good, you know. But it serves us that familiarity, those familiar territories. But because we know that if I make, if I make a change within myself, I may not feel the same way about you. I may not feel the same way about the things I thought I wanted, but if I be honest, if I'm aware, doing the work, you know what I'm saying? I realized that I only wanted those things because a part of me was still moving in those aspects of the wound that was and felt emotionally neglected, that felt like just so used to moving and relating with people like this, but it's like, hold on, no. What do I want more? Do I want to be familiar or do I want to be loved? Sometimes it ain't the both of the worlds. And in love, you don't know. It's unknown as fuck. We say we want love until it's just like, oh shit, I don't know what's going on in here. I ain't know I had to let this go. Damn, I wasn't ready to let that go. I'm not used to that. I don't know about over there. So we try to hold on to the aspects of our egos that attract certain energies and dynamics that will still create that pattern, that cycle of what we know until we suffer the experience enough to where it's like, nah, bro, this shit got to change. And so we change. We start creating those spaces for ourselves, and we create new hopes, and desires, and expectations, making sure that we're aligned with it and it's in knowing, like, it's okay to have hopes, desires, and expectations with other people and how you want to connect and build with other people. But it's different now because now you're not trying to force someone to walk into the potential image of their character just so that it aligns with your vision. And honestly, that does a disservice to both you and that other individual because people process and go through their journey differently than how you show up and what you're feeling ready and willing to do. They may not feel ready and willing at that moment, but don't try to drag and rush their process just so that it makes you feel comfortable and that has the potential to take you out of alignment and to have that other person be out of alignment. Sure, y'all yeah, may sign up for it on some karmic shit, but even if moving out of goodwill, good intentions can pave the pathway to hell too. And most of the time, it only feels good, not because it's good for us, but it's because it's good in comfort level. It feels good to the ego because... It recognizes these patterns. It knows these patterns. It can predict these patterns. It's familiar because we've learned to relate with other people in these dynamics where it's like, well, I've learned how to give and receive love in these spaces in this manner, in this way. And I've learned how to feel love, to give love and feel loved in these spaces and taking and partaking in actions in these ways. But now the body is responding to you telling you how, although familiar in these ways, this isn't serving you holistically. This isn't nourishing you holistically. You need to expand. It will feel uncomfortable. It will feel like what the fuck you don't know because you don't. But you need to not know in order for change to happen, in order for you to grow. So grieve the potentiality, but know that it isn't the loss of that other individual. It is the loss of the aspects of yourself that when you release them, it is the person that you've imagined to be all along. And it always required you to take actions and steps into how you relate with yourself and how you relate with people. And it's very possible to have that be rooted in love. And you don't only have to relate through your suffering, triggers, fears, and trauma. So grieve, let go, and be easy.